Hi kids, Mike Kelly from animatorsforum.com. Uh, somebody on the YouTube site asked me for a tutorial on how to do this. So I'm going to show you. This is the, Actually, I'm going to show you this because it, it demonstrates a lot of things that I think are worth seeing. Uh, what he asked was specifically how to make a laser blast appear from somebody's hand and then uh, go away as if uh, when, it, when it hits something, I guess, it disappears. So I think this is what he meant. So let me first show you how this is set up. Uh, this is, I'm gonna bring the layers in. Those of you that know my tutorials know I don't normally work with layers, but in this case, we have to work with layers. What I did was I created a layer called laser. Okay, got that? And the, the laser layer is above my upper, this is the uh, upstage uh, forehand, the upstage, I'm sorry, that's the upstage foot, it, but it's above the upstage hand. The upstage hand is here. So uh, it's above that. And what it, it's also linked to the hand bone. So if you go down here to this little bone here, it's linked to that. So what you do is you create a layer and you link it. You use the, um, if you go to the very first frame, you go to the tools. Uh, this tool here will bind the layer to that bone. You want to bind the layer because the bone is going to be, the hand bone is going to control the, um, well, you'll see. Uh, and, and you do this also if you're going to, I was going to do it with a ball, but I ran out of time. My wife's home and we got to go shopping. But I'm, I'm going to show you in another tutorial how to pick up a ball and throw it. Uh, I can't show you that right now as I don't have the time, but uh, you do the same thing. Whatever you're going to have in that hand, you're going to want to bind. With a ball, though, we're going to create a duplicate object. But in this particular case with the laser, we're just going to create that one object. You'll see how that works. And the laser layer uh, is, if you can look down here, is actually invisible right now. Okay, so let's we're going to turn that on. Unfortunately, the bad part about it is because it's invisible, you, you can't see to work with it. So I'm going to, I'm gonna uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to go to where it's visible so you can see it there. Uh, there's a layer. How I created this was I just drew a line, just a single line. I created one point here and one point there and just created that as a single line width thickness. I can't talk. And uh, if I go to uh, styles, you'll see what I did was there, there's two shapes here. I made one shape uh, with this soft edge here and I created it with a blur radius of, of 12 and that's the interior uh, yellow shape. And then that sits on top of another shape uh, unfortunately, and if I hide this, uh, if I hide this shape, you'll see this, and then I can go to this other shape here. Um, this other shape has a width of two and um, a soft edge as well. well. That's not the, hang on, that's the same shape. Hang on a second, let me go. There we go. The bottom shape has a width of three and it has a soft edge as well and it has this red color to it. And I, and I gave it a, a blur radius of 50, so it would be a blur, a wide blur if I, um, if I show this yellow shape, this yellow interior one with a with a one width, you'll see I only have a blur of 12. And so that seems to give me, if I render that out, it seems to give you a nice kind of a glow laser effect. And you know, anytime you're trying to get a glow effect, it's it's kind of an illusion because it really depends upon how it contrasts with the background. So in this particular case, black background works really good with glows. Getting glows on light backgrounds is almost impossible. You have to resort to overclocking, but I don't even want to go into that, uh, oversampling the, the stuff. So anyway, so that's my laser. And you'll notice uh, if you uh, if you see that, and of course now I've set keys there that I'm going to get rid of. Um, but as the, the laser is, is linked to that hand, so you can see that that's it's linked to that. And what I did was, when I, after I created that line, then I, then I used the transform layer tools to match it up. So I went in, I'll, I'll do that so you can see. I went in to... Uh, that's the laser line selected, and then I went to trans transform layers, and I and I exactly first I set the axis, that's this uh, you know this the the origin point right to the end of the laser because the end of the laser is where we want the origin point to point to if that makes sense. You can't see it well here because it's invisible and hidden, but if you if we go in here, you can see the origin right here. Hopefully, you can see those lines here is right at the end of the laser. So I positioned that end right where his finger is going to be. Okay, with me so far? Okay, we're almost done, believe it or not. So then, at the, at the point at which he fires the laser, so right here, there's no firing of the laser yet, and then at this point, the, the layer becomes visible. But we don't want to see the whole laser because he's firing the laser. So what we, we use as a very cool tool is this uh, stroke exposure. And stroke exposure, if we turn it on, you'll see, first we start off with zero, zero. That means basically there, there is no stroke there. I'm gonna get rid of this layers. There is no stroke uh, along there. But as we adjust the percentages, the stroke will, will then reveal itself. So you see here, 
And so what I have is I have one that goes all the way to 100%. So that means it starts at zero and ends at 100. So there you see the laser shoots out at 100. And then I put a hold key there to hold it at 100. And then I reverse the procedure. And you'll notice now the start percentage is going to go down. I'm keeping that end percentage because I still want it to go all the way to the end. But now the start percentage goes down to zero so that the laser disappears in that direction just like it was fired. So that's the whole process. And what it looks like is something like this. And the, the nerd scientists, of course, are the ones that have the laser fingers. They, they always have the best laser fingers. All right, well, thanks for following, and hopefully that helps that gentleman. I'm, and by the way, that's a lot slower than I would do it in real life. Uh, I did that slow enough so that you could see what was happening. But if he's going to fire a laser, if it's going to be that slow, I think the other guy would just take out a gun and shoot him. Okay, talk to you later, guys. Bye.